IIC and Tokyo Institution of Science and Technology. Look forward to hearing some insights from you on the minimum viability products. So, so with no further ado, I invite Ravi Kirti Menon for the introduction about our Honorable Chief Guest of the Day, Mr. Joji Jacob. It's a great honor to have you, sir, Mr. Joji Jacob. He's a top class leader with history of working in education management industry. He's skilled in educational assessment, educational technology, research, performance measurement, and interpersonal skills. He's a certified AQ and SQ practitioner. He started as a mentor in schools, decided to support 10 plus aided schools from applications to successful implementation of APL tinkering labs in four districts of Kerala. He's the CEO of STEM Cube Private Limited which is a digital platform which develops products like STEAM Class and STEAM Labs that aim at the well-being of students. STEAM Class is a virtual platform integrated with an AI tools that handholds learners with project-based learning specialization on green projects. He's graduated from University of Kerala with MA in English Language and Literature and has done research under University of Melbourne to mobilize international educational, political and business communities to make the transformation of educational assessment. He has a strong foothold in leadership development, STEM innovation, and young entrepreneurship. Possessing a strong inherent passion for corporate interaction with student community in general, but not confined it to alone with the hope to a bandwidth from schools to professionals. He has worked tons of projects, to name a few, 3Q Matrix, Robo Rave India, etc. We welcome you, sir, on behalf of IAC, IEDC and from the Electronics Department, CS Department, and IT Department of Tokyo Institute of Science and Technology. Thank you, sir. Over to you. Yeah, thank you. And uh, good evening, young innovators and uh, the teachers, the professors who are molding them. So happy to be here. Uh, first of all, I uh, thank uh, Professor uh, Titus for inviting me. I don't know how he found my uh, name and profile and then asked me to talk about this subject. This is one of the uh, favorite uh, passionate subjects for me, you know, uh, because I'll tell you why it is so passionate and so dear to my heart, because we are going to talk about startups and with a special uh, title given, which is very much welcomed, welcomed all over the world, which is Lean Startup. So it's a very passionate uh, topic that we're going to talk and it's the need of the hour also. And uh, uh, so quickly, I will go into the presentation so that you know I don't uh, spare time we don't lose time and uh, you can cope up with me and if you have any difficulty in understanding the most important is understanding the subject it's a little uh, complex uh, uh, area so if you students find any difficulty feel free enough I can talk even in Malayalam and I can make it very clear to you so with that uh, freedom and you know with that uh, happiness we would like to I would like to go into the topic of the day. Are you able to see my screen? Is my voice clear? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's clear. Yes, sir. It's clear. All right. So uh, uh, the selected topic is lean startup, uh, and uh, the lean startup in the second machine age. Why we are bringing this uh, topic is very important. And the second machine age. There are some terms which you need to uh, you need to align and then understand with me so that it will be easy for you to. Uh, go forward. So we will be uh, talking about the picture uh, which I have put in here. You can find two characters. One is a human being. And if you uh, look very closely, you can see that the lady is walking with a bag which should be grocery or something which has been collected from a shop. That is uh, the usual pattern. We also go to the shop, we buy things and then we put it in a carry bag and then we take it. That is the one way of it. So you have a human being uh, in the traditional method of uh, shopping. And at the back, you can you, you are very familiar with this product. I know all of you engineers are very, uh, students are very familiar with this. This is Starship uh, product developed in UK. And this is a delivery robot. OK, so those who have not seen uh, more about uh, this, I will just show you a video. I am just uh, using certain terms which uh, you need to be very familiar with. Uh, one is I'm talking about not an industrial robot. This is a delivery robot, a service robot. So uh, let's see what is the uh, work of this robot. I, I think uh, you will not be able to hear the uh, audio. Am I right? Yes, sir. We cannot hear the audio. OK, so I'll uh, just go back, and then I will change my 
Yeah, for this, I'll just give the explanation because audio is not that important. I can just uh, explain to you. So this, uh, this particular video, we are going to talk about, you know, how machine-to-machine uh, -machine communication is going to happen. That's very important as well as uh, my first area of the topic that we are going to discuss would be uh, the machine to machine communication. So how machines are going to communicate each other. So here you are getting an, an order through your app, which is a mobile app. And then the, the restaurant or the canteen in this, uh, campus, you know, it is a wide, big, big campus of a university where, you know, the students are getting orders. One of the uh, thoughts behind it is, you know, the students will not uh, waste their time. You know, if we are talking about innovations, we don't have time to waste, especially in lean, which is agile. Uh, so, uh, we are very particular about time management. So here, see the way the communication happens between two machines. Uh, the app has given the code and then it has opened and the food is delivered. So that is the work which is happening. So it's a, it's a very important uh, thing to talk about today, how machine to machine communication is happening and how you're working on this. So that uh, with that, I will just go directly into the uh, the topic of the day. There are some terms which I'm going to use here. You know, uh, some of them may be familiar, but I would like to know that, you know, you are going to very clearly follow on the terms that I'm talking about. And then, you know, we will uh, clearly take you to the lean startup. So first of all, uh, we have seen that uh, digital technologies, especially during the COVID and, uh, you know, the one, one and a half years after COVID has come into, uh, we are totally impacted in all areas of our human society with digital technologies. I was just saying in a meeting, I would, I'll also uh, reaffirm here. See, just imagine that we were uh, affected with this COVID before 2000, uh, year, year 2000. So what would have happened? If internet was not very fast, you know, if COVID had come, then we would have been in trouble. But now, the COVID as, as uh, it is, it is a very uh, naughty thing. We don't like it. You know, it has to be washed out or you know, wiped out from the society. That is OK. But because we are blessed with the digital technologies and the tools, so we are able to overcome. You uh, teacher, teachers here, professors here, uh, as well as students, have moved quickly to your homes and you've gone into another way of learning that is you know, learning from home or you know, teaching from home. So it is all because of the digital technologies. The health department has been working very closely because of the uh, huge advantages that we have taken because of the digital technologies that we, we are using in this society. Now, the first word that I would come and use here is digital economy. We are in digital economy. You should not have any doubt on that because digital economy is the period where you know we are the, all the revenue income is coming from the products, services, and tools around you, which are digital products and services. So we have moved out of knowledge economy and we have moved into digital economy. So that is one term that I'm going to be very specific about. Second is, you know, the transformation is uh, happening because of the digital transformation. The technology uh, used is, you know, digital technologies that we are going to talk about that have changed the way that we live, the way that we work, the way that even we play. You know, now yoga is practiced online. Uh, various uh, sports are now everything is moving online. So I would say even the play of the students have moved into this type of a, even professionals have moved into this type of a platform. So there's a lot of transformation happening. Uh, even if you check from the year 2014, 2015 up to 2021, uh, we have seen that digital transformations have slowly, slowly taking over the society. Next, uh, what I would like to uh, talk about is the second machine age. This is one term which we need to know very clearly. Second machine machine age, if you want to understand, you should understand the first machine age, which is, you know, you, you think about uh, when electronics came into the manufacturing area, the manufacturing becomes automated, internet has been coming into the, uh, the uh, area of manufacturing. So that is the first machine age, where industries were automated, electronics uh, are taking up and playing a very important role. And me personally, you know, I worked in various industries, for example, I was one of the first uh, members of the BPL mobile team when we when we rolled out uh, mobile technology into Kerala, uh, the market. So, you know, we have seen, I've seen uh, going from 1G to 2G to 3G to 4G now, which is very fast in terms of when we started in 1996. Then I moved into the banking insurance area where, you know, we were talking about implementing the uh, the rollout of digitalization in banking, the ATMs and all that. So what changes uh, senior people who are sitting and listening will understand. What are the transformations we have? Uh, I've seen in my life that uh, very great transformations happening in telecom. It's happening again in, in uh, the industry like banking, insurance, and um, stock markets. So uh, the second machine age, which I'm going to uh, talk about, is 
a different age, which is because of the speed of the internet, we have uh, risen to uh, artificial intelligence-based smart machines and services. This is something very important. This is this is the most uh, the the most uh, demanded thing that is going to happen, and that's happening now. So the rise of artificial intelligence with Internet of Things that is creating a lot of smart machines and services around you. So that is the second vision. So particularly, we should say that it is after 2014, this type of artificial intelligence is getting spread out and. Uh, even Kerala, like a society and a state like Kerala, is also being uh, receiving, I mean, giving both arms to artificial intelligence and bringing products out of this. Then we need to understand the machine economy. So I uh, started with digital economy. The next word that I would use is machine economy. Machine ec economy is nothing but, you know, the smart machines which drive the global economy. So uh, now we have. Uh, humans are not slaves of machines, but humans have mastered machines, and we have developed a lot of machines so that machines are helping us to live a better type of a life. That's uh, the income uh, has changed. India is a country where you know the uh, the revenue or the economy of India was more specific and you know more into IT. Now we are going into artificial intelligence and smart machines, which which is also uh, very lucrative for a country like India. So we are moving into machine economy. So. Uh, the next word that I would like to introduce is Society 5.0. Society 5.0, if you need to understand, you know, uh, we should understand because of the speed of the internet, there in some parts of the world, already the society has moved into 5.0. If you should understand 5.0 society, then you'll have to go back and understand what is Society 1.0. When human beings, uh, when um, people started uh, living together or going to the forest to hunt animals for the food, that is Society 1.0. Then we started living together and uniting together to make our agriculture, you know, one of the best practices. So that is the agriculture uh, society, which is uh, which is clustered around agriculture. So that society we call it as society 2.0. Then we moved into society 3.0. That is the uh, the society that I was talking about, the industrialization and the automobile industry, which came up, and all these electronic automation and all that has happened in the industry. So that is industry uh, and based society. That would be, uh, we have seen four revolutions in industry. So the fourth industrial revolution is now happening. So that is society 4.0. Now uh, we are talking about internet uh, getting more speed. Now uh, there is a country which you are very familiar, Japan, which is introduced, which had introduced artificial intelligence or society 5.0 way back in 2017. And uh, uh, the 5G was rolled out in Japan in 2018. So we have seen that Japan is one society, which is one country, which all the societies, they have uh, taken it as a rule to move to society 5.0. So you should understand what society 5.0 is. And India is now planning to move into, uh, because we have delayed because of the COVID, uh, we are moving into 5G. The speed of the internet uh, is getting into 5G now. So we will also be slowly moving into society 5.0. When Japan is, and other con European countries, many of the European countries, they are planning for uh, 6G um, um, telecom speed or internet speed. So society uh, 5.0 is something which will have uh, super smart machines which are you know going to be autonomous machines and the society itself is going to be smart so the first question that i'm going to place in front of you young dynamic engineers is where are you going to be placed in a year or a two or three that's the question that we are, we are trying to answer here the first question is coming out where are you going to be placed are you going to be placed in society 4.0 or are you going to work and live in society 5.0? This is a very clear distinction that has to happen at this point of the, uh, of the webinar. So you have to understand where you need to prepare yourself. If you are going to prepare yourself for internet and the uh, knowledge economy, then you are wrong. I specifically say that you need to prepare yourself for society 5.0. You need to be very familiar with smart societies and you should be familiar with uh, the smart uh, autonomous machines that we are going to talk about. So this is a picture about how you know we are uh, going to use terms in this uh, webinar. Now, when I say uh, about uh, digital economy, we need to uh, specifically think about uh, certain uh, aspects, points that has uh, the ways of life that has happened around you. you know, unnoticingly, this has happened. Now let's uh, go back and think. You know, what are the changes that has happened? What are the activities that has resulted to billions of everyday online connections uh, among people, businesses, devices, data, and processes. 
the backbone of the digital economy, as I told you, is hyper-connectivity. Very high-speed connectivity is required. We are thinking about metros running on uh, internet. We are thinking about uh, the uh, local uh, vehicles, like you, you take the uh, buses. The buses would start running on internet. So the connectivity should be very, very fast. So that's one most important thing when we talk about digital economy. And that is the responsibility of the government. So the interconnectedness of people, organizations, machines, and the internet, the social media, the mobile technology, the smart devices, all put together, we will say that we are in the digital economy. So these are companies, Uber, Airbnb, or Netflix, and Amazon, and Google. All these are companies you know, which have gone up a hand and making preparing uh, systems and machines and platforms that is suitable for people to be, lead a beautiful uh, life with uh, with the digital technologies that we are talking about and uh, uh, the digital transformation when i say you know the, it's it's the change which is going to bring in the application of the di digital technologies that is very important now i understand from titus sir that you have uh, I mean, there is there is students coming from electronics background also. There are students uh, listening to me from uh, mechanical branch. There are students uh, from IT and computer. All departments, maybe uh, civil engineers, also listening to me. So I would say that you know the application of digital technologies, which can result in human human uh, indifferences, human living, human life. We want to make the life of human beings very simple, very easy, and very affordable. You know, technology is one thing which is very economical. Don't mistake me. If you look at the four or five year budgets, you know, last four years, have you ever heard the data prices going high? The data prices will be going very, very low every year when more and more speed and speed has been angled. That is what I have learned in my life. We started with 18, uh, 18 rupee 40 paise per call. Now we are paying very few, you know, 20 paise or 30 paise per call. And for the data, it is very, very cheap. So digital, I mean, when you talk about digital technologies and when you talk about internet, it's it's very economical. So how, we need to use that economical uh, advantage and take uh, the maximum result out of this transformation. Now, there are services and products which have transformed our homes, am I right? So you may be using all these products by now. So either, uh, we, we are going to talk about smart homes uh, while we will be talking about what are the things that already that has uh, been in the society and what what are the things that we are expecting so that you know as innovators as uh, youngsters or engineers who are moving into startups you know this would give you a very clear picture where you need to position in terms of technology and the devices that uh, products that you are going to manufacture so you are very familiar with uh, appliances any appliance now with a microcontroller and a program which has been done into it has become a digital product. So it can be a fan, it can be a light, it can be any thermostat that we are using. The doorbells, the ovens, dishwashers, everything is uh, completely moving into a digital uh, product and service. We are very familiar with Amazon Echo, the Google Home, the voice assistants. Please be very careful when we talk about voice, because this is going to impact life in a huge way, the voice assistants that we are going to talk about. next. Uh, we have Wi-Fi enabled pressure cooker. So everything gets connected with the internet, the home robot. Uh, we, we will specifically talk about home robot because uh, there's a huge opportunity for youngsters who are listening to me because every house in Kerala needs a home robot. It's a huge market which is getting ready because of the speed. When the internet speed moves into 5G, uh, this is one area where you will have a lot of things to be doing because uh, man will be communicating with machines and machines will be communicating with machines. So machine to machine communication and man to machine communication. These are the two ways of communication that we would be uh, coming up with. So this is one very important thing that you need to note. Then uh, you are very familiar with the uh, dash or the buttons which are placed uh, for instant orders by Amazon. And you are also very familiar with the uh, robotic vacuums uh, especially uh, iRobot, which has manufactured these type of the designs has come from iRobot. So iRobot is one robot which is you know very famous for cleaning and mopping floors. So um, now uh, businesses are transformed because of the digital products. One example is the retail shop. Whether you talk about Walmart or Amazon, Amazon Go, or you know uh, the uh, shops uh, 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 you are going to be very familiar with. You don't have to. 
uh, take your money or you don't have to wait in queues to pay your money. But uh, COVID is changing again. You know, COVID is making a lot of changes in the way that we are uh, we are shopping because of the social distancing norms. But just before COVID, this was the case. And we are also in a transportation has changed. You know, uh, Google has developed a, Vimeo cars and Uber itself is now thinking about self-driving Ubers. So there won't be drivers, you know, the uh, vehicles will be uh, operated by the people who are going to travel with communicating with a machine to another machine. So let us come to healthcare. A lot of products have come up in health healthcare, especially for diagnosis, any sort of diagnosis. The or even the oxygen oxygen meter is very famous now. So you have apps, you have devices which are very familiar in this background. Now, when you come to into the homes, you know, into your own homes, there are a lot of devices which have been working on microcontrollers. The refrigerators, the washing machines, the ovens, the coffee machine. The coffee machine is something that uh, we are going to talk in in an example. So there, there, there are going to be logistics which are going to happen for this type of uh, microcontroller devices. I, I think you are very familiar with the difference between microprocessor and microcontrollers. We are going to talk about small, small uh, small nano chips which can uh, be very efficient in doing one particular task and also changing the way that we live. So these are uh, great changes that is going to happen. I've told you very clearly about the first machine age and also about the second machine age. So the automation of a lot of cognitive tasks by human beings is going to be done by the machines because uh, when you understand what I'm talking, you know, the way that you should position as a, as a startup uh, innovator is something uh, very, very crucial. You know, we have to be very clear that we are coming up with a product uh, which is going to be suiting to the second machine age. Now, you're also familiar about uh, Sophia. Sophia, which is uh, one of the, um, so which is the first uh, uh, humanoid, which has got uh, a citizenship from Saudi Arabia by Hanson Roberts of Hong Kong. And you know, uh, Sophia is now attending many of the uh, leading webinars and it has been to India, it has to be, it has been to IIM, uh, Calcutta and also Bombay. So Sophia is something, you know, uh, that we have seen very typical conversations uh, uh, happening be between the engineer and Sophia. So how does that conversation happen? Uh, that we will understand when you are giving importance to these type of tools and platforms uh, where we are talk talking about artificial intelligence, machine learning, computer vision, and deep learning. So um, there are also very, very, uh, uh, there, there are also machines or platforms like, you know, IBM's uh, Project Debater and uh, AlphaGo, which is another platform which has been developed by uh, Google. You know, where they, 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 it is used for playing this against this Chinese board game, Go. So Go is very famous now. So uh, a lot of youngsters are after go, so that that is some area where a lot of uh, conversation is happening between machine and human beings. So these are areas where I am just pulling your attention to where uh, people have started using machine to machine communication in our daily life. Robots can converse, they can debate, and IBM Watson is one another thing where you know you, you, if you want any advice on any uh, legal aspects, IBM Watson can do that. So uh, machines have cognitive skills. Now we are trying to build the cognitive skills into machines. But there are certain areas which will always be with human beings, like creativity, intuition, and all that will be always in, in, in with the human beings itself. It is the creativity of the human beings that is designed this. So I will say always human beings are superior. Uh, machines are never superior to us. And machines are made uh, through this uh, creativity of human beings. So they, there are a lot of cases now replacing human beings. Now you have auto ML. So uh, that's a beautiful uh, 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 topic that uh, has been taking over the uh, conversation industry, which is the machine language. And uh, uh, the new one is called as tiny ML. You are very familiar with the small tiny ML, which can, you know, you can use uh, in, in conversations. So the that software is writing and testing and fixing problems using a computer. Now Uber, I have talked about autonomous vehicles. Uh, you, you have machines which uh, make hamburgers and you have uh, Watson which provides all these legal advices. Now let us come to a situation where you, know, you are living in a home. Uh, when I say this example, uh, you will understand what is the scope of innovation that is going to happen be around you when you look around. Like, just imagine that you are in a smart home now. 
and every day morning you are in the habit of having a cup of coffee when you wake up and this coffee in this house smart home is prepared by a coffee maker so one day uh, before you get up you know the coffee should be ready one day the coffee maker uh, is in shortage for milk so what happens before we uh, wake up we have set a time of 7 am in the morning so before we wake up the coffee maker will place a request of the milk to the refrigerator in the home uh, because it's a smart home so the refrigerator has two possibilities it will check in the uh, milk crate and try to understand whether there is milk or not so the communication between the machine has gone and the refrigerator will check so there will be two opportunities here two instances one is it may have milk in the crate it may not have milk in the crate the first situation if it has milk in the crate it will ask the uh, home robot to take the milk and deliver it to the coffee maker so the problem is solved there and you know uh, the coffee maker will prepare the coffee but in an instant where there is no milk in the crate of the refrigerator what happens the refrigerator will put an order to the retail store so the retail store will uh, supply the milk or milk powder either through a flying drone or a uh, robot you know a delivery robot also can be used as we have seen so the milk will come to the home robot and the home robot will fill the milk with the refrigerator and the coffee maker and things are in place so this is what we call it as much so we need to as youngsters or as innovators you need to understand where communications happen between human beings between machines and what are the scopes of communications and where you need to find data of communication that is the first point that i am going to build and bring it in front if you want to move from the ordinary startups to the uh, uh, lean startup that we are going to talk about so this is one situation uh, which you need to understand very clearly before going forward i will show you how it is happening in a 5g society how this is happening in a 5g society that's going to be uh, real, uh, really very very interesting isn't it so uh, let us look at this video and this video i will try to play i'll just uh, come out of this uh, uh, because it's a japanese video so i would like to like uh, you to see it in the japanese language so you will understand where exactly the communications are happening between the machine and human being so if you can note you will understand how uh, how smart and how powerful the communication is going to happen between machines and machines and uh, between um, human beings and machine one minute just listen to this conversation and then we will take it from there i said in the beginning that japan is the first country which is announced in the parliament by the prime minister of japan that japan is moving to an ai society 5.0 in 2017 and 5G was rolled out in 2018. So this is happening in Japan. So we can take it as a model, as an example. For youngsters who are listening to me, there's a huge opportunity for you to come up into lean startup and start building these type of products, which you can be very successful as an innovator. Are you able to see my screen? And I'm going to play this. Yes, sir, we can see. ここはちょっと未来の日本のとある街時間ぴったり。IoTやAI技術によって叶えられるソサイティ5.0の社会です。おはよう。朝ごはん何にしようかな。5時はいかがですか。いいね。そろそろお出かけの時間です。よ。
can you tell me where exactly communications have happened from this video somebody who can volunteer and uh, you know can start speaking to me saying you know these are the areas where communication has been noticed what are the things that you have noticed did you see the video were you able to see the video okay. yes sir yeah okay. Yes, sir. okay some places you know because we are using this type of platform sometimes mistakes happen okay now can somebody tell me you know where exactly communications were happening so the first place we saw was a smart home like hmm. the home was all connected the refrigerator mixer and all the stuff okay and we could see the grandma was taking uh, was taking with advice from the doctor hmm. from her home hmm. so he was able to diagnose her from home hmm. and there was a tractor that was automated hmm. there was a store which is which was collecting the order through an voice assistant and hmm. made it ready when she arrived yeah very good so i think uh, i would say almost 60% you have noticed but there are certain things yes agriculture field joseph is saying and there are certain things again we need to go so there are a lot of we are talking about cloud computing we are talking about voice assistants we are talking about machine to machine communication tiny ml communication please note this word tiny ml say tiny ml is going to be uh, bright and tiny if you if you start understanding tiny ml you know you will not you will not waste any moment in your life that huge possibilities that we are going to see in tiny ml and you know uh, the, the that's also the tiny ml and tensorflow light combination i'm not talking about machine learning and tensorflow i'm talking about uh, machine learning uh, which is tiny ml and uh, tensorflow light which is a framework which is coming up and that's going to change most of the voice conversations that's going to happen and remember please you must have also noted that this is uh, the rural area in japan this is not the city the tokyo city or the famous cities that we are talking about society 5.0 with uh, internet if it is deployed properly by the government there is huge possibility for all of you engineers as innovators to work out various uh, various businesses and coming out as successful um, successful innovators i don't see any reason why an innovator should fail if you take the uh, survey of uh, uh, the uh, harvard university on startups you know it was 90% failure now it has come down to 75% because of various classes and things but i would say in lean startup which we are going to discuss the the percentage of failure will be narrowed down to maybe I, I'm not joking. It is going to be narrowed down to something around 10 to 15 percent. So, how will that happen? That is the beauty of the framework which I am going to talk about in in that uh, in the lean startup uh, framework, which we'll be discussing later. So, you have understood the opportunity. When India is going to declare in the Digital India program, when India is going to declare 5G happening, that means all engineers who are listening to me will have huge opportunities coming up because of the speed. And Japan, by the time, would have gone into 6G, where you know the uh, big, big uh, vehicles like transport systems, like uh, the uh, freight carriers, the logistics, the uh, buses, everything would start working on the internet. So uh, we are going to be much safe, safer and safer uh, when we are uh, living in this world. So you, you and me, we should be lucky to be here in this part time of the world. Uh, where COVID is not affected before 2000. I was always thinking about it. I keep thinking like that. So now let us continue from here. <clears throat> right. So you must have understood the scope of machine to machine uh, uh, transactions, which is going to happen. So uh, a lot of ideas can come into your mind, you know, uh, thinking about looking at various complex problems where, you know, communication is going to be very important, where microcontrollers are going to be very important sensors aquatic sensors and these type of sensors are going to be very important motors are going to be important and uh, above all that the programming is going to be important the beauty of uh, the lean startup is is a teamwork so uh, you will understand how this team will be made when i talk about that and uh, your success rates are going to improve there now what are the skills that uh, is expected in the coming years the skills that are expected in the coming years is imagination creativity innovativeness that is not in the in the machines that is in human beings then you can be working in collaboration virtually or physically you you have to grow interdisciplinary skills you have to master just in time learning you know you need to learn something apply and finish and move to the next because we are very fast 
then we are talking about the entrepreneurial skills which we are going to discuss these are the skill sets and my question now to titus sir is sir could you tell me how many students are uh, studying in your college nearly 1000 1800 uh, 1800 students but how many are attending this uh, webinar today so 117 students are attending now so the luck, you are you are the lucky 117 because you know there are a lot of engineers in the society a lot of engineer engineering students in your college but everybody is not into entrepreneurship i am going to show you how uh, uh, how wonderful this concept of lean startup is going to be and that can change your life and become another person not in a year in 90 days in the matter of just 3 months that's my subject now we have to finish everything in 3 months Uh, lean startup works very fast and we are very careful that nothing fails in between wastage will be put down cut down and the wrong things will be eliminated and that's the way that we are going so these are skill sets which are highly required for any engineer or any uh, person who is going to come into uh, the lean startup area are you clear yes sir yes sir okay so the uh, so in the center we have the iot which will be uh, which will be uh, aligned or i will say married with ai so i will call it as ai ot which is the new things that are coming up which will work with uh, the subsets of artificial intelligence like machine learning uh, deep learning and computer vision and things like that on the other side uh, one of the uh, safest areas to write and you know uh, even the accounts the ledgers the financial dealings because i've been uh, working with banking so i've come out and i've understood that blockchain is going to be the safest programming there then we can also think about augmented reality mixed reality Uh, and virtual reality we call it an extended reality then aut automation robotics is there so you, you are going to handle huge data big data so these are the emerging technologies where you need to put your eyes on and if you are ready with this and you know you can just uh, start thinking about how you can move into uh, the next topic the hot topic of the day which is lean startup are you ready Yes, sir. Now, so uh, we have seen um, the huge transformation that has happened around you because of digital uh, technologies, digital platforms, the digital tools, the digital products that have come out, and the companies that are making these type of digital tools. How rich they have become! You know, Amazon was the richest. Now, Tesla. Uh, the elon musk is the richest now everything uh, changes in a very quick fraction of time so now we need to think what is exactly digital skills i'm not talking about skills i'm talking about digital skills it's a wide variety of abilities that has to come in uh, into you by using the technological tools devices applications systems and networks i repeat the tools the techniques devices applications and networks that that is uh, the usage how fast you are in using it uh, is going to build your digital skill you are going to be looked after see um, i have seen a lot of mtech people i have seen a lot of uh, mca people coming to us without digital skills we cannot afford we uh, require digital skills so first and foremost is to understand what digital skills and where is it going to be where it is going to be used there are four areas where you can pin it down one is simulations you should be good in simulating and showing things in a virtual environment you should be good in photo editing enhancing photos that photographic skills you should be good in designing whether it is using 2d tools or 3d tools you know you should be good in in uh, changing your imagination into reality you should be good in playing with electronics so these are the areas you know the four stay areas where you know digital skills can be applied if you are good in all the four i do i have not seen Uh, one person good in all the four but you know uh, at least three uh, you are going to rock so digital skills is going to be the main block of digital business there are going to be technical skills creative skills is huge levels of complexity but very important is how quick you acquire digital skills now what you can do is you know in in a in a century like this and moving forward to a job place you cannot think about Uh, a, a engineer getting into a, a digital economy or in a, a second machine age without this type of digital tools and skills that we are going to talk about this very significant 
So with that, let us see what are these uh, skills. I'll just uh, uh, categorize into three the digital skills that uh, some of the digital skills that we are going to talk about, and what are the tools you can just start thinking about. And one is you know uh, easy skills. If I put a timeline, you know, easy skills, you can sit with a tool and master that skill in less than an hour. For example, the Google form, the, the data entry form, the photo collage. Uh, if you want to make uh, music with a machine learning uh, tool like SongMaker, you can do it in, in, in a half an hour, or you engineers, uh, students can do it in an hour. So these are easy skills. The presentations, uh, preparing presentations either using Microsoft presentation, PowerPoint, or Google Slides. Uh, you can also be uh, fast in uh, preparing QR codes, uh, scanning them, and uh, you know, using them. Uh, in science, you can simulations, you can use FET when, you, when you're using FET. Or there are a lot of simulation tools that you can use. Maths, there are, for, for uh, young students, there are GeoGebra. And in engineering, you use computer-aided designing, Autodesk, uh, math, math work, or these type of tools. So uh, let us talk about a little more time-consuming skills to learn. If you have these skills, you know you can note it down. Which are the ones that you should generate? Which are the ones you already have, so that you can uh, position yourself as an innovator? So now, you are good in uh, making a video, but are you good in making video stories? How good you are in narration? How good you are in storytelling? You can use tools like Adobe Spark or any video uh, creation, creation tool and uh, prepare it with a storyline. And that is creativity. And how good you are in making a website. Once you have a product coming, you need to make a website, isn't it? So I'm talking creativity, how you can build creativity into it. And if you are good in programming the HTML or the JavaScript, uh, which are you know the uh, type of uh, websites uh, which can be used today. And you can build a website with Python. You should very clearly know what, what would be the uh, cloud computing usage when you're creating with Python and when you're creating with HTML, HTML5. So uh, you, you can also start writing books. I saw you know, Sandit uh, today, uh, who is the owner of uh, Aditya Solar Boards. You know, he has published an e-book on all the works that he has done. So you can order e-books. Nobody writes in uh, papers now. Everybody uh, is putting an e-book and putting the link into the website, and it is getting uh, uh, clicked and used by, seen by a lot of people at a very short time. Now, augmented reality is very important. How you can bring virtual uh, situations into a, a, a physical uh, environment. How you can bring that virtual environment into a physical environment. That is by using many of the augmented reality tools. There are wonderful engines like Unity, which can be used for gaming and also augmentation. And uh, recognizing and uh, classifying objects in images is computer vision. How you will be good in using the skill of uh, taking pictures, putting more and more and more the pictures to the computer so that the computer will understand. For example, you know, there are, if, you, if you have made an app using machine learning, and now you can you can recognize who are the people who are not wearing ma mask and who are wearing masks. So there are a lot of examples you can use with uh, uh, these type of tools. Now, uh, if you are interested in space, you can design simulate rockets, and even you know the uh, you can be followers of the operations that is happening by NASA and uh, SpaceX with uh, uh, Mars. So now. There are also, uh, you should be good in computer games. If you are interested in computer game, uh, you can uh, think into looking into more of tools which can, which, where, by which you can develop computer games. 3D modeling, 2D modeling is going to be a part of every innovation. So uh, how good you are in using 2D and 3D. And then chatbots. This is conversation. Chatbots are going to play a huge role in your app, in your website, and you know, uh, it can be a voice chat. It can be a text chat. So uh, there are chat bots. There are search chat bots, which are searching things from the internet and giving it to you. So these are intermediate skills, which you can, if you sit for less than two hours, you can, you can be very good in you start acquiring the skills in the intermediate level. Now you have advanced computer programs, like you know, if you are good in programming, like you are using um, uh, the JS platforms, the, uh, the cutting edge JS platforms, like uh, the um, uh, Angular or React or uh, React.js or uh, these backends also can be created with uh, JS today. 
and uh, you can also think about uh, animation stories you know if you are good in using 2d 3d you can move into animations and you can also start using animation story where you need to spend at least three to four hours to master a skill then you can make as i told you you can make an app with machine learning you can make an app uh, with uh, with the ordinary android or iphone app python is uh, now used uh, in all these artificial intelligence areas then we are going to talk about internet of things i mean where we will be talking about microcontrollers uh, we are talking about sensors there are different different uh, uh, segments of sec sensors which are very powerful cameras motors and all these uses uh, how good you are in uh, building and simulating robots how good you are in building programming and flying drones these are advanced technologies so this if you look if you take a piece of paper take your notebook and try to uh, write down see which are the skills that you know whether they belong to ec whether they belong to intermediate advanced and what are the skills that you would like to learn in the next uh, coming days so that you know you can be a part of a good entrepreneurial team so this is uh, how you know you should build you should start checking yourself and acquiring as much as this digital skills uh, that you can now we need to think uh, to the main subject which is lean startup so this is actually a feedback pool lean startup when i introduce it's a feedback pool where you know you are taking a lot of informations from the customers and you know where you are going to work based on the data that is why we call it as an inf uh, feedback pool how good uh, will be the combination is something that you need to understand very cl clearly this is the uh, this is the magic of this the, uh, this program lean startup and this has to be clearly understood you know you the first phase is building second phase is measuring third phase is learning these three uh, stages together make the lean startup so India, uh, we have, uh, we, when we talk about Lean Startup India, uh, one thing is very clear, you know, in the 21st century, employment will have to come from new ventures. So that is the importance of uh, Lean Startups. We will have to have more and more innovations coming, more and more successful innovations coming, growing innovations has to go from startup to uh, medium type companies and big companies. It has to grow. That means uh, startups can hire and employ more workers so that is uh, one of the huge economical growth that we are looking when we introduce lean startup now the what is the difference between startups and lean startups a quick uh, uh, look into it uh, one is you know if you are into uh, startups the ordinary startups uh, you will have to first uh, talk about elaborate planning you are as a team will start and sit and elaborately discuss and plan what are the things to be doing then a lot of intuitions will come like let us do this try this if we try this uh, it is going to be some uh, successful so a lot of intuitions can come in the ordinary way of doing a startup and uh, uh, you have to then you all all your team members will have to sit work together and bring out a big design and the design has to be uh, the wireframes has to come up front and only after that your startup the uh, work will start or you know the mvp will start uh, in place that is the usual procedure but in lean startup the things are entirely different. We will first think about the problem that we are going to identify, what uh, the complexity of the problem, and uh, these are locked, problems are locked. So you will immediately use the framework, which is Lean Canvas. Lean Canvas, I will be explaining it to you. Uh, we will start working on the Lean Canvas first, and we will be identifying the uh, customer segments, and we will be identifying the uh, problems, particularly list it down, and then you will talk about if you want to unlock this problem, what is the key, the solution that you have? And you can try that. And that goes in three steps. First is the building stage. Then all the data will be collected. And then it will be cross-examined, measured. And then you will go into learn. If it is working, it is OK. If it is not working, we will finish there. And we will move out to something else. That is why I am saying the, the success rate of lean startups, if it is professionally executed in your college, the success rates will be very, very high. Because we are working on experimentation, we are working on customer feedback, and we are working on iterative designs. This is the nature of Lean Start. Somebody is not working in experimentation, customer feedback, and iteration model. You're working on elaborate planning. You are working on board meetings, discussions, discussions. You are in the old startup model, the existing startup model. The Lean Startup is 
completely the opposite side of it entirely different the approach is different the mindset is different we have to have an idea like for example we are going to study about the uh, dirty water which is you know distributed in the city of kochi for drinking that is the problem if that is the problem that we are going to address a team of engineers or youngsters will start coming together and then we will look into the trade we will look into the the digital skills acquired by each member and then we will start experimenting we will put an mvp in place and we will select uh, a, a x number of uh, customers who are using that drinking water and we will start experimenting with them the mvp will go and start working with them that is that is uh, i'm saying this because you should understand the mindset is entirely different it is not the mindset of the ordinary startups which is happening and everything is getting uh, discussed and noted down on the lean canvas which we are going to talk about there is going to be change in the business model canvas which is used by the startups which is going to be lean canvas which is added with the business model canvas so I, i told you very cl clearly there are huge innovations happening in the area of tiny ml the future of ml is tiny and bright there are some examples which i am showing you here we'll let us go and see the uh, examples uh, clearly one by one you know uh, we we can have a discussion first is uh, the siligiri is uh, the you know is, if you have traveled through siligiri it's more into the forest area a lot, lot of wild elephants crossing uh, the uh, railway lines so we are, uh, they have come up with a project there uh, which will which will clearly uh, sense the coming of trains coming of uh, animals wild animals and the trains will be informed and the trains will stop for the animals to cross over it's a very small uh, uh, small uh, thing when you t talk about but it makes a huge impact in the society there this is uh, uh, this this picture on the right side the pillar is the actual the bottom of a uh, uh wind mill now the wind mill you know is huge expensive very expensive for uh, for making the um, regular uh, what do you say uh, the the regular maintenance is very costly so they have installed a tiny ml machine there which will sense all the problems which will discuss uh, with the machine the wind mill and you know it, it, they will uh, sort out the problems and give it up front to the engineers so they can save a lot of money Uh, in in operating the windmills the the picture on the uh, left bottom is a wonderful project which is sensing the mosquitoes they they have made a machine to sense the mosquitoes so that you know you, your people uh, can be saved from uh, diseases which are caused by mosquitoes the the right bottom is uh, uh, nuru in africa the app is called as nuru uh, and uh, nuru is uh, the app uh, which uh, is uh, used by farmers in Uh, tapioca farmers in africa because we have a lot of people eating tapioca in africa and you know uh, this app clearly works on tiny ml and uh, uh, the tensorflow lite because you know the internet is the greatest problem there they are free, there are frequent uh, internet disruptions so you know uh, tiny ml and uh, this combination together you know works even without internet and when you have the data coming and internet coming you know they will upload everything and it works perfectly well so you have lot of uh, such uh, uh, projects we are giving these examples because these are things that you can start thinking about and you can uh, find out which are the problem areas for you to work around now if you have identified the problem let me tell you very clearly your well being is very important as an engineering student you are going to pass out of the college in a year in a two years three years you are going to be in a working place i've seen lot of engineering students coming out of the colleges they are finding it very difficult to pay emis now the well being of students will start changing if you can study these digit acquire these digital skills position yourself and start uh, solving problems building wonderful products so that you know you will be acquired either by companies or you can buy yourself Uh, start selling your product that is uh, going to give you a brighter brighter future so when even talks about well being 2030 uh, the itri uh, these informations are available the, which are the top 10 uh, top 10 technologies the top 10 technologies are listed on itpli and computer society websites it's listed as as i told you artificial intelligence is number 1 number 2 is 6g which is going to come autonomous vehicles industrial robots and service robots blockchain new energy vehicles 
renewables and uh, biodegradable plastic materials, solid state batteries, nano materials. So if you are uh, positioning yourself into these areas, you are going to have a very bright future. As I told you, tiny ML is bright and tiny. And if you position yourself in these areas, your future is also going to be bright. This is very simple. The strategy is very clear, very simple. And now let us see how we can start working on a problem. Now all of you start thinking about any problem around which you want to really solve. Now I'll just take you through this build a mechanism. The first part of MV, the preparing an MVP for the purpose of testing a number of assumptions, hypothesis. You may have an hypothesis, assumptions, yeah, but you can start uh, developing an MVP at this stage and start testing. The first thing is you will design, design and build out the details of the experiment. You will figure out the problem and you will build out the MVP and you will start positioning it between the people who are affected. That is the first thing that we do. So you should have a data of uh, the people. That is why the first easy tool is data entry form, the Google form. You will use Google form and start communicating with people who are affected by the problem that you are identifying. And then you know you will take the data. You have, if you give it to hundreds of people, you have uh, quantity data. But if your questions are very good, you have quality data. So it should be reliable, actionable data. And you know you are going to communicate with them and saying you know what are the features that you would require, what are the existing solutions, and what uh, what again is the problem, and how much we should uh, give more features. Uh, are to be added. No, you are not working on your features or your assumption. You are taking the data of the people, understanding what are the features required by the people who are affected with the problem, and you are working based on the data. That's the beauty of the first area built. And second, you will be taking it very simple. You'll, you'll put the first feature. You'll, you'll add very, very simple features and give it back to them. And then they will, they will use it and they will validate. See, the customers will validate it for you. Either they will validate or they will reject. If they reject, they will clearly tell you the reasons for rejection. The hypothesis will be rejected. Your thought will be rejected. Your way of uh, solving the problem will be rejected. It will come back to you, and then you will rework on it. So that is the way uh, you will run the product. You will conduct various surveys and interviews. You will collect the data. As an engineer, as an innovator, you should be very good in working on data. That is why I specifically say whatever tools related to data management, data collection is very, very important uh, for an innovator. So this is the first phase of, it, of Lean Startup. Are you clear on this? Sure. The other way around is you, know, you will be sitting and making a plan and then going to the society, going to the people. The people by then will have started using various new things. And you are, that is why Harvard says 75% of the startups are failing. That is a serious thing that we need to consider. We are working on data here. The building aspect is the MVP is built for a particular purpose. And you are using machine learning. You are using deep learning. You are using computer vision. You are using IoT. You are integrating with big data to get the maximum uh, hypothesis uh, done correctly. That's the most important point here. Now, after this, what you do is you move into the measure stage. What you do in the measure stage is very, very uh, important. All the results that you have obtained during the build phase, you will collect, and then you will collate it together and make an analysis. What happened when this solution was given to them? What are the implications there? You will be answering these type of questions, and you will make a comparison of the hy hypothesis versus the reality. If you, again, you need to fine tune and get yourself fixed into the reality, you can do it based on the data analysis. And once the data is analyzed properly, you need to organize them properly. Easy to understand. It should be very clear. Or data should be very clear. Data doesn't speak wrong, isn't it? So data speaks the facts. So it should be very clear. The scenario should be very clear. That means your assumption is working well. And then you have to compile it properly and hook it with your viewers. You want to show it to your uh, startup mission. You want to show it to your IT process. You want to show it anywhere. You know, every, everybody that sees the data will clearly say, wow, this works well. And this data is clearly showing an indication that this project is going to be successful. This product is going to be successful. You are measuring it. Measure and do. 
That is the second stage of the lean startup. Third, when you, once you have done that measurement correctly, you will start sitting and learning on it. Now is the time when the team will come together and make a decision based on the assumptions and the measurements that has been received. Either you will persevere, persevere or you will pivot. Either you will uh, persevere or you will pivot. These are two important things. Either you will carry on with the same goal or you will change the experiment with that. And I will very clearly say it doesn't take more than 30 days to do this. Either you will understand you are going to be successful in solving this problem in 30 days or you will change. So we are, we are cutting short every sort of wastage, every sort of human resource wastage or data wastage or any resource wastage that is going to happen that can come forward. So you will list all your findings and then you start making it in the form of a presentation. And now your MVP is going to be refined. What we do is we come to the framework. You know, Before going to the framework, the most important thing is you have to make a team. You are all engineers. I have seen a lot of startup coming, You know, engineers who have the same skills working together. That is not here. In lean startup, we don't do that. We have different traits. We will have somebody who is good, very good in need analysis, very good in presenting to people, presenting and taking the need and putting the data, so a presenter. So he'll be using all the tool, tools, that is digital tools, which are required by the presenter. Then you will have another member who is very good in data analysis. So he'll be working on the back end with the data and giving a push to the people who are working in the front. There will be the designer who will design the product. There will be the builders. It can be the hardware builder or the software engineer. Hardware engineer or the software engineer. So you can be a team of four or even five. as you can and you know, so it's a wise to have a team of you know uh, people studying with you with the different traits with the, uh, di different digital skills coming together and solving a problem i repeat the same digital skills suppose you have three people with uh, 3d uh, tools are used very clearly or three people who are very good in using uh, microcontrollers programming them that is not the one that should be constituting the team in lean startup we should have a different hierarchy of members, different trait, behavior, the concept, the mindset is different. The way you work is different. So that will make a successful team. And when you come in and when you've studied this lean startup process, you can sit together and then you can work on the framework. This is the framework. This is a beautiful example of a framework which has been used by Uber. And Uber, you know how successful they are. Now. The first point that you will start, your team members will start putting together is the customer segment. Who are the people who have been affected by the problem? Who are drinking dirty water? Now, how many people, how many families? In Kochi, you will have thousands of families affected by it. Then you can see uh, who, is, you have thousands of people. Try to find out the 100 early adopters who are ready to work with you, who are ready to use your product or the MVP, from the MVP stage. Those people are called the MVP. You identify them, and then you work on the problem. Go to the left side, work on the problem. Put the challenges one by one, based on the data in the build stage, based on the measurements, based on the, uh, the most important is the learning part. And then you, you will put the problems together. And what are the existing solutions, alternatives? You will put it there. And how good your product future will be better in that area. So those things should be put together. And then you uh, you validate your product, the solution. The key metrics is you know, what are the numbers that uh, is, is going to be uh, re uh, received in terms of using your product. You clearly create a unique value proposition. You clearly work out on the cost structure. The left side is very clear. The left side of the uh, lean canvas will talk on the production side, on the product, building the product. The right side will talk about the customer, the, the unfair advantages for your product, the channels that you're going to use, and the revenue streams that you're going to build. The channels are very important. Now, stick on to the digital uh, channels. You can use social media. Digital channels are wonderful channels which you can use to reach out to customers. That is why you have a presenter in your team. That is why this presenter will start moving and uh, uh, pushing the product into. And you will not go and sell. 
the one of the best advantages is you will identify the unfair advantages which are exceptionally good for your product and because of your exceptionally good and unfair uh, advantages of your product customers will start using it so that these are areas where you have to work very very clearly tighten yourself work as a team and get the best results based on the lean canvas if you are good in doing this lean canvas exercise you go back and do the iteration again which is that iteration build measure and learn go third time if you do it three times your product is fully fit to conquer the market and i have examples to show you i say repeat once second time third time and you be very familiar with how you can do that conquering the market because of the unfair advantages that you have got i've got a plan which i usually do with uh, colleges or schools uh, we call it as lean startup in 90 days and that that is worked on a time schedule and you know we have a weekly plan which i will share with titus sir you know he will be sharing with you where if you look you know we'll be uh, week by week we'll be going in 12 weeks you become a successful startup uh, entrepreneur acquiring digital skills two weeks are put in there problem identification lean startup build measure learn the first round second round third round and then lean canvas is something that you work along with that and you go to the second round third round then you fully concentrate on going to the market giving it back to that huge sect of people who have been associated with the data the beauty of this lean startup is your customers are ready when you do the from the day one your customers are ready looking for your product and the presenter will keep on keep on pushing pushing anxious materials into their lab, uh, whatsapps and you know social media platforms so that they will have a curiosity to see the product in all the stages they'll be testing it with you then you can set up an online store and you will talk about business finance you will start uh, your online business and you can pitch your product in any uh, area whether it is startup mission or any venture capital meetings so we have a very well set designed product a plan for 90 days and in 90 days uh, you people can be successful as an entrepreneur as an innovator now if you if you are thinking about uh, understanding more you know i have put a, a, a group in created a group in linkedin where which is called as lean startup india you can join that and we can start conversing and also you can uh, follow my company which is uh, steam cube which is again there on on linkedin so Uh, you will be able to understand uh, what we are doing the most important thing as an organization as an institution uh, titus sir and uh, the teachers the uh, professors that are listening to me you can think about whether you want lean startup to be rolled out in your college so that uh, can be another exercise that you can start uh, thinking about discuss and you know you can always freely come back and contact me so with this i'm so happy to uh, share this meanwhile before going i'll just try to show you Uh, a small exercise which is done by a seventh standard student and he is working on this six, not 90 days it's working on 60 days project he is working on a, um, he is in the seventh standard in kendri vidyalaya in kadavandara his name is madhav and uh, he is working on a project which is called which in the health industry he is trying to make a digital health organizer by the name pokmed and uh, the, the te technology that he is using is flutter the technology framework he is using is flutter and uh, almost you know we are expecting the release on a pa pan india platform uh, within a short uh, time by the end of this month you can just see how the lean startup works i'll go back and switch the mode so that you can also listen to uh, this is very uh, in why i'm showing you this is you know uh, if you have the mindset the right type of mindset age is not a problem no anybody can do it we are proving it to you so i'll i'll invite you to see this uh, product which is developed by this youngster pokmed pokmed uh, it is going into all the aspects that i talked about all this thing
So uh, with this, uh, I end my presentation. You know, um, you can tell me now how interesting it was, uh, how useful it was, yeah, and more. You know, if you have any questions, you know, you can freely ask me. Uh, I'll be happy to support you. I mean, answer uh, as much as I can. Um, good evening, sir. Good evening. Thank you so much uh, for this presentation. It was very clear and a uh, lot of new things you were saying. It was very interesting to watch, and I'm sure many of our kids were also found it interesting. And uh, the last example of a sixth grader that was quite inspiring. And as mm -hmm. you suggested, uh, definitely about the institute, we are uh, seriously thinking about it, and we will be in touch with you, sir, in future also. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. And, so much. Uh, and uh, I'm uh, taking this opportunity to thank uh, uh, the management as well as. Uh, Titus, sir, for inviting me, and uh, it was a very great uh, pleasure talking to all of you, seeing engineers, hearing my words, and uh, looking forward to any type of association or support from my side. I'm happy to do that. Thank you very much, and uh, have a blessed weekend and uh, uh, the wonderful days of uh, July in front of you. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. If anyone has any questions or queries, please. Thank you. So you said data and AI is a big part of the future. But recently, there's been big data leaks in big companies, and no one has been put, like, no one has been pointed out who is this or, like, how is this, how is this being leaked? So, like, how can we protect our future like, on this? Okay. Yeah, see, uh, there are wonderful technologies coming for that, you know. So uh, I, we are talking about blockchain and uh, the internet itself. There are wonderful technologies coming out for that. Uh, but I would take it in a different angle. My thought is, you know, because there is a lot of data now leaking is happening. So first, uh, let us have a lot of data to be used as innovators. You know, we need, uh, as I told you, we need more, uh, more, more and more companies to come up and a lot of opportunities for youngsters to come up. That that is more vital, I think. But the uh, the uh, the question that you are asking is more related to the policy of the government. So there, there you now now certain things are happening with the government. Policies are being taken, so we hope and pray that uh, these type of uh, things will be stopped. Uh, I mean, the the uh, in the activity which is happening with the central government and Twitter is one example. So, uh, it, it, I think these are policy matters uh, for them to happen, and we we should be very positive towards that. OK, I usually don't have questions coming to me because you know there are two reasons. One is you must have not have understood it, or maybe you'll be uh, uh, taking time to discuss within yourself and then uh, coming back with the questions, right? Yes, sir, probably that's the reason. <laughs> OK. So Aisha, we'll go for a word of thanks. Okay, sir. Good evening to my young person here. I am Aisha Tanha, Canvas Ambassador of IDC TIST. I deem it a great honor and privilege to propose a word of thanks on this occasion. I, on behalf of IDC TIST, IIC, and the entire fraternity of college, first of all, I extend my most sincere thanks to our honorable chief guest, Mr. Jyoti Jacob, sir, to take our time from his busy schedule for, for this marvelous explanation on the Lean Startup. And which that I would like to thank our IDC Nodal Officer Advocate Titus Thomas Sir and IIC President Dr. Srija Subhashma for organizing such a wonderful event in collaboration with the respective departments. I would like to thank our Principal Dr. Preeti Teket, HODs from different departments for this enthusiastic support. And at last, but not the least, my heartfelt thanks to all the external participants and my dear friends for your active participation. Once again, I thank one and all present here. Thank you. Thank you very much.